What's going on everybody? Sean and Jay here and this week we decided we would do a collectibles video. We haven't done one in a while so we kind of wanted to share a lot of the new stuff because we've gotten a lot of new things. The main reason why we haven't done one of course is some of these we got and they immediately basically had to go into a box because we were moving. Yeah. And then some of these we've got since we've gotten to the house but we were setting everything up, so we just had another video. So we were like, let's play catch up tonight and show you guys what's new. So Jay, why don't you lead us off and show us what you got? All right, the first thing I am going to show off, I actually got this quite a while back. Uh, I wanna say like five or six years ago. Uh, for some reason we had Star Wars, the Black Series figures and I'll put a picture of this stuff at the end when I'm watching the video. If it's not clear, I'll put a picture up. If you can see it, awesome. But uh, this is a Kylo Ren. Uh, funny story about this is there was only two left. Uh, I hid one behind some pancake mix on an aisle. <laughs> and it, it stayed there for about two weeks until I could buy it. And I bought it. Uh, for me, uh, the... Force Awakens on first viewing was amazing. Uh, it's still a good movie, but after a while you just realize it's just a new hope for a new generation. It's still a good movie though. And like I said, the, the figure was cool, and I'm a big fan of figures and statues and stuff like that. So when I saw this, I picked this up. So yeah, the uh, Black Series Kylo Ren. Nice. I promise we didn't plan it this way, but there's going to be a lot of Kylo Ren in this video. So I'll just go ahead and let's move on with Kylo Ren train. <laughs> this was one of those, I decided I wanted another 10 inch pop. Didn't know what I wanted. Going to Walmart and this happened to be there and it was, from what I understand, not an easy one to find because it's also glow in the dark. But it is a 10 inch Kylo Ren that glows in the dark. And yes, it actually does work. It just... I'm not going to show that off right now. Yeah, super dope. But it's really cool. So I was like, all right, cool. Because the only other 10-inch pop that I personally had is uh, Deadpool, which is totally cool. But I was like, yeah, you know, i got to add because we've got a whole big shelf of them back here. I want to have more than just one. Yeah. So that's what I got. And I actually, I love it. It's probably one of the cleanest ones because we all know that some of the pops, you can get them and the paint work is a little janky here and there, but this one's actually really clean all over. And of course his head, you know, he's, he's agreeing with everything I say right now. Yeah. Anyways, so yeah. And Jay has another one. I'm not sure what he's got. Okay, well I did my Star Wars stuff and guess what? Just like people can like Marvel and DC, people can like Star Wars and Star Trek. So what I have next is it's a triple. Uh, I actually got this from my aunt quite a while back. I mean, this is from 1991 when they were selling this, but you know, it's just, it's a triple, you know, when you, when I feel kind of down and I just feel like petting something that's not the dog, uh, just pull this thing out of the case and just, you know, the, our, our puppy likes to talk a lot. Sometimes I don't want to hear the noise, okay? I just rub the triple. When life throws you at Jeffrey, stroke the furry triple. Stroke the furry triple. Yeah, but I've, I've always been a big fan of. Uh, I, I have I've yet to watch Star Trek Discovery or the Lower Decks cartoon that came out. I haven't watched that. Discovery I have seen season one of, and it's take most of what you know about how a lot of the Star Trek stuff is done and the way they do their storylines, throw it out the window. This is a very different kind of Star Trek. Very re rebellious is a good way to put it. Very off the cusp, which is good because you know everything needs a twist here and there, just kind of something different to shake things up. And that's what Star Trek Discovery is. I'm ready to watch season two as soon as I can find a way to watch it. If I've got to buy it, fine, I'll do that. So it's, it's, is it kind of like how they did the movies where it was an alternate timeline? Kind of, not, not, I mean, not the show's an alternate timeline, but like the twist of it, a twist of the movies was it was actually an alternate timeline. They found a way to twist that show to where it's different from the other ones? Well, no, because um, what it is with Discovery, Discovery takes place 
before that the original series. This is actually oh. a, a little bit beforehand. And at the very spoiler alerts coming at the very end of the first season, you meet Pike and the Enterprise, mm -hmm. and they show it and whatnot. But you see certain things, and you you know you think about some of the tech and everything they have, and you're kind of like, well, how how does that work? Because if, if you if for anybody who's watched it, the Discovery ship has a mode of transportation where. It's based off of these things that they can uh, they inject, and it's and what they are is kind of like a way if you were to turn a black light on and you could see different uh, you know it was I'm trying to think of how to word it, but like if you turn a black light on and all of a sudden you can see something, it's like they're a way of like uh, doing they map the universe in a weird way. Like blood vessels in your veins. There we go. Oh, That's okay. a good way to look at it. And they use Anthony Rapp's character because he can kind of do it, but um, they can travel along that plane in a great distance within a second. You see the ship kind of do this weird little spin thing, and it phases out, then it appears right in front of you, and then it can do it again. And you can oh. literally just do, they call them jumps, is basically what they call them. And they, it can travel in that mode. It's the only ship in the fleet that can do it. It's kind of interesting. Yeah, it's really cool when you see it. I've got season one, so I'll have to introduce him to that when we get it. But anyway, at Tribble, because we yes. went way off t t tangent with that, but yeah, Tribble's my other one. It's it's just soft, and like I said, my aunt gave it to me, and I'm a big fan of Star Trek and Star Wars. You can like both. So, my Tribble. Yeah. Sorry about that, guys. It, <laughs> it would have been shorter if I'd been passionate really about Star thing. Trek, this man is. <laughs> anyway, all right, so my next one was uh, one of the... Uh, pop scenes, I guess is what you call this. Yes. We got this along with a 10 inch Dumbledore. This was the christening of the new house. We got these two pops. They were the first things we bought here and then we put on display. So I will try to show it as best I can. It's an Alfred character and Wayne Manor. So I saw it. I was like, you know, I, I wanted to get it and I was glad when we went back the week of to get it that it was still there. And I was like, all right, cool. Well, we'll show it in a, in a future video so that you can see it. But um, at the same time, there was a 10-inch Dumbledore. We were like, it's not going to be here if we come back in a week. So we got that too. And we knew this one wasn't going to be there either because people were starting to kind of buy them off the shelves and whatnot. Yeah. All right. And what do you have next, Seth? My next item. It's going to be the rest of it's kind of uh, all DC related. <clears throat> So, for Christmas one year, I got a set of Justice League Pez, Pez dispensers. Yeah. Uh, I am a little perturbed because it has all their symbols on it. And I've never actually opened it, opened it. It's got all their symbols on it, but there's no Flash and no Wonder Woman. It's just the four. It's, it's yeah. Yeah, that is a little weird. Superman, Batman, Cyborg, and Aquaman. Still pretty cool. Maybe that means that there's a whole other set. Who knows? Maybe. Uh, you know, it's it's DC. I'm a big I'm a big comic person anyway. And Pez, I mean, Pez has been around forever. I used to collect Pez's when I was younger too. So, uh, got a bunch of different Pez's back there, and I'll I'll showcase them sometime later. But. Yeah, somebody just said, oh, well, Justice League and Pez combine two of my favorite things together. And so, yeah, Justice League and Pez set. Yeah. Pretty awesome. So, my next one was one that I actually just got this past week. Um, and part of the reason why the book caught my eye while it was on the shelf was because in, Jay had done a video recently where he talked about Garth Ennis and how good of a writer he was. Etc. Etc. So, I saw this. It's from Aftershock, and it's called Out of the Blue. It's a hardcover trade. Well, I spotted it, and I saw Gar's name on it, and then there was a, a uh, sticky note on the front of it at the comic shop that says, "I'm autographed." So I had to do a little dance with my fingers to get it off the shelf because it, it was actually taller than me. And sure enough, right on the inside of the page, we'll we'll do a close-up picture of this one. Right on the inside of the cover is a card with Garth's signature so for me that's cool I've got, I'm starting to get a little bit of a collection of this stuff 
going and I just think it's kind of cool to have that and whatnot so that's mine and a little background apparently this book for Garth is based off old war stories that his grandfather used to tell him as a kid oh, nice. so there's some truth based into what he wrote into this comic nice so I'm actually genuinely excited to read that so a little bit of trivia for those and thank you Jenna for that bit of trivia because I didn't know that until she uh, saw that I got the book and whatnot so that was I was like that's pretty cool so, well, right. That yeah. actually sounds really, really dope because, I mean, Garth, that might be completely different from what I'm used to Garth because most of the stuff I read by Garth is very dark, very not safe for anybody under 18. So that might be interesting. That might be something totally different, you know, That, or it could just be the same. I mean, it's war stories, so you never know. True. Very but true. I, it sounds I interesting. can't think of anything I've read by him yet. So this might be my foray into Garth's stuff. So, but, I mean, whenever these two say something's good, they, they don't lie. I haven't disliked anything they've suggested to me. Well, no. No. <laughs> nice. All right, now, the next thing I have, like I said, my last couple things are DC related. So uh, back when Her Hurricane Harvey hit, we actually had Dan Didio and Jim Lee come down. They were visiting uh, the local comic book stores around. And uh, I got some other things I'll showcase later. I we took two or three books and got them both to sign. Even if they didn't work on them, I was just like, I just need your autograph, please. So uh, what, we, what we got that was signed from both of them already was a Justice League Day comic and it's a Houston Strong comic and this is signed by both Didio and, and Lee and uh, it was a it was a quick it wasn't a, really a meet and greet it was basically we stood in the line and uh, first of all I said in another video Jim Lee came by and asked how I was doing and I I froze I froze like a girl meeting her crush for the first time in person I, I couldn't say anything. Jenna was laughing at me. But uh, when we actually got up to the table, I shook both of their hands. You, you could tell these guys were tired. They'd been doing this all day. But uh, it was really, we really appreciated it down here. And hope, uh, hope one day I get to see both of them again. But yeah, the Justice League Day comic, I haven't even opened this to read it yet. It's just, I, I was just like, oh man, it's signed. I, one, one day I will and I'll do a review on it. But you know, we actually had seen the movie uh, the morning before. So anyway, we went back later that night to actually stand in line and get this signed. And then right after that happened, Sean and I went to go see Justice League. That was that same night you and I went to go see That's it. That's right, yeah. And she was tired. She had to go to work. We had already seen it, you know, like I said, the previous day. But it was a good time, good movie. Uh, actually super excited to see what this Snyder Cut's all about. Mm. But... Uh, yeah, Justice League Day, Houston Strong, comic. All right, well, my very last one is back on the Star Wars train, back on the Kylo Ren train, but I don't care. Um, so I was bored one day. I wanted a new pop. So I was going around and looking, and I found this uh, Kylo Ren, him and his TIE fighter thing, and I was like, oh. I'm gonna grab that because nothing else was really kind of catching my interest that day and this did so I was like you know what I'm gonna go ahead and grab it because it's the only one on the shelf which definitely means if I had hesitated and come back later it wouldn't have been there and we've all had those regrets so I was like screw it I've got the money let's go yeah. I got that one and I'm going to preface this by saying while I am the biggest Star Trek nerd in the world or one of Star Wars for me is mm, but I've stated in the past, most pops for me aren't always necessarily about characters that I like. It's just I think they look really cool. Yeah. So there, there may be stuff that I get down the road for something I've never even watched. But because it looks cool, I'm going to grab it. So that's kind of, and I'm not going to say that's kind of the reason behind this, because I have watched two of the current trilogy. I haven't watched the last one yet. And I, I enjoyed them a little bit. They just, you know... Like he said, the first one felt like it was a new hope for a new generation. The middle one was 
which was the last one I saw. I liked it. My favorite scene being, you know, the end with Luke going, and the, you know, after they all blast him and whatnot. But that's neither here nor there. But that's that's pretty much why I got it because Kylo is actually a really cool looking character in general. So and these two pops that I have are pretty much the reason why. If now, I never have any more Star Wars pops, these will probably be it. Now I got I got a question because I'm looking at this. I notice he's got the cracked helmet too. Is that one supposed to be glow in the dark as well? No, this one does not glow in the dark. This one is supposed to, but the only thing that we can get to really glow on it is the sword. Hmm. The saber? Okay. Yeah. His lightsaber. And that is about it. God. People are gonna crucify me in the comments <laughs> for calling it a sword. It's it'll be fine. I, I, I they're already gonna it. get me for, for talking about the Force Awakens and me gonna openly say I thought Rogue One was actually better than both the regular Star Wars in that trilogy. Haven't seen that one. Rogue One is so good. Yeah, I need to watch that one since it's on. So anyways, guys, that's all we got this I week. I got one more. Oh. I got oh, one more. Shut down! I got one more. And this will kind of segue into something else I'll talk about in another collectible thing. So, I am a very big fan of reprints. And I know, and a Superman, of course, yes. Um, you know, there, there's many comics out there that are worth hundreds of, th hundreds of thousands, even millions of dollars. And if I can't afford something like that, which I can't, but if, if I can just find a reprint, I'm cool with that. And I mean, Marvel has True Believers, and that's how I have the New Mutants 98. I think it's 98. I'm a comic book fan, and I totally forgot if it's New Mutants 98 or not. Deadpool's first appearance. Good job, so I'm, ba I'm bad with the numbers on some of this stuff. Uh, I have a reprint of the, the first Incredible Hulk comic, the True Believers reprint. I'm, I'm a really big fan of those. What, one of the things that I've had for a while, and to be honest, I have no idea how I got it, where it came from, but it is a 19... 85, I believe, reprint of Action Comics number one. Have no idea where this thing came from. I just remember having it. Uh, now I went back and I have basically any run of Action Comics from the New 52, Rebirth, what have you. I have every, technically, Action Comics number one. Uh, the ones from Rebirth. I believe didn't go back to number one. They went. They still kept going with the numbers, but it was technically for them a number one. Uh, you know, Superman's first comic, not even flying. He runs on power lines. Uh, it's just one of those things. I've always. It, there's another thing I can't even begin to tell you why Superman. I just he's the first hero that I remember, and it's probably from watching the old George Reeves TV show when I was a kid and. You know, actually seeing Superman the movie with Christopher Reeve. Uh, when uh, we used to get Loot Crate, I actually have, they sent us with one of the uh, superhero box, I can't remember which one it was actually called. I got another copy of uh, Action Comics number one. So I got two copies of this. One's from, you know, 2017 or 2016. This one's from, eight. I think it's 85. But, uh, yeah, I don't care if it's not worth money. It's just the fact that I have the first appearance of my favorite hero, my favorite hero ever. So, you know, I keep this in its little, you know, little plastic sleeve, and I have it in a little Superman, I uh, can't remember what they're called. It's like a magazine divider, but I can't remember what it's called. Mm. But, uh, but yeah, that's like, this is like my favorite thing in my collection of comics, to, to be honest with you, just because it's, you know, Action Comics number one, reprint or not, you know, just really nice, you know. You might inspire me, sir, to go try to find a copy of a Daredevil first appearance or number one. Oh, yeah. His very first comic. But that, that, now, that's all the stuff that I have for the collectibles today. Yay! <laughs> Uh, when we come back, I can't wait to see the what he throws in here for the dope moment. Yeah. Anyways, for real this time, that is all we've got. Till next time, guys. Everybody, stay safe, stay healthy. Love you guys. Catch you later. Later, Tots.